The Department of Fisheries has revealed Sean Pollard, who lost both hands and part of an arm in a shark attack, was most likely bitten by a single great white shark. But there were no human remains found inside the stomachs of two great whites captured and killed shortly after Thursday's attack. Within two hours of the shark attack on Sean Pollard, fisheries officers had captured and killed two great whites. It was most likely a white shark that bit him. But the shark expert says they weren't necessarily responsible for biting off both the surface hand and part of his right arm. We can't tell whether these sharks were or were not involved in, in, the, in the bite. The captured sharks were young females. Tests revealed their stomachs were empty apart from a piece of bait inside one. Either they hadn't eaten anything for, for some time before capture or it's not uncommon for sharks to regurgitate um, the stomach contents when they are captured. Sean Pollard reportedly told rescuers he thought he was bitten by two bronze whalers but Rory McCauley says evidence including bites on the surface board points to one great white. The white sharks have uh, um, commonly have a bronze coloration dorsally and um, uh, they can be mistaken for bronze whalers quite easily. The opposition leader says they shouldn't have been killed. There's no evidence that sharks attack again. In fact, be, all the experts say they don't. Sean plays football for South Bunbury, his club mates rallying to help him on the eve of their grand final. The amazing thing we've seen is the whole sporting community and the Bunbury community have offered any support, any way they can raise funds and help Sean and the families. The attack didn't deter swimmers at the Cold Water Classic at Cottesloe this morning. It's always in the back of your mind, but I tried blocking it out. Jerry DeMassi, Nine News. And Rebecca Johns, there's been a steady stream of visitors at hospital to see Sean Pollard today. That's right, Christina. Family and friends have been coming here to Royal Perth Hospital to visit Sean right throughout the day. Now, we have been told he is currently awake and recovering after undergoing emergency surgery. And we have also been told he had to undertake several blood transfusions during that time. Now, the road to recovery for Sean is going to be long and difficult, but his family say despite all that has happened, he is remaining upbeat and positive for what's to come. Christina.